brother, do say amen for Pastor Blake. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm, I'm going to turn this around where we can see this. I want to talk tonight from Galatians. Hey, Linda. Hey, Pastor. Galatians, the fifth chapter, and fifth verse. Galatians 5 and 25. Galatian is, uh, I always feel funny saying epistle because it's just a letter, but that's how they put it. They say epistle. So I'm glad I know that it was just one of Paul's letters. Paul's 13 letters are uh, instructions to the believer. Instructions to the believer. The first thing I have to have is direction. If I'm going to go somewhere, I need the right directions. Then, after the right directions, this should be turned up just a little bit, I think. Uh, then, after, okay, that's good. Uh, after the right directions, I need uh, the inclination to follow the directions. Uh, Brother Spann and I were talking about um, seed. If you can take a seed and put it in in the ground, but it depends upon the, 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 the kind of ground it is, whether it produces anything. And I guess, Lady Deborah, that's kind of how you, you wonder about, you have children that come out of the same house, but they're so different. They're just so different. I, I used to say that it wasn't a dime worth of difference between people, and that's true, but if there is a difference, it's the heart. It's the heart. Some people, hey Teresa, mother nun, some people, uh, uh, their heart won't let them repent. And when I say repent, I'm not talking about what, the way they taught us, you go to crying, it's not, and I ain't going to do it no more, lying and all that. I'm not talking about that, lying about you getting ready to be perfect and I ain't going to do nothing wrong. I'm not talking about that. Repentance comes from a Greek word, metonia, which simply means to change mind, change your mind. In one place, Mother Nun, the Bible says that it's the goodness of God that leadeth thee to repentance. I often say, if you got a mind to do right, you need to thank the Lord for it. That didn't come from you. That didn't come from you. And I want you to know that, that, that that's not going to just happen. You actually have to desire. You have to want. If a person wants a happy home, it's not just, just getting married and having a great big wedding. Uh, carnally, people think that if I, the bigger wedding I have, the nicer that the wedding dress is, uh, the more people I invite, uh, the more expensive the caterer is, then that's going to give me a great marriage. But you can do all of that. I've seen it done, and the folks didn't stay married no time. No time at all. It's, it's got to do with your mind. Uh, if you live long enough to know that the battle is in your mind, that Satan is out to get your mind, and the mind, what gets you so bad, what really gets you is, is that when you think you know something. When you think you know something. And that's the reason that success usually is not good for us. Because if a person is successful, they start thinking, then I know what I'm doing. You see, it is through failure. The Bible says, he, he told Paul, he says, that my strength is made perfect in your weakness. When you see that you can't make it without him, that is, that is when that you turn to him. No, nobody's going to turn to God if they don't need him. And man's inclination is to lean and depend upon his own thinking. Right. Don't, don't, don't. And that's reason Jesus said, that suffer the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. You see, a small child just to look, and we, boy, boy, it hurt our heart when they change. But when they're so small and they're so sweet and, and everything, it just anything that you say and the way they call your name, Papa. Mama, just the way they call your name, just melt your heart. You've been out here with all these devils all day, and you come home, and daddy, this one is. And then, but when they get to know something, it's a whole different world. 
Let me put a pen right there very quickly and just say that I have a friend that I want you to just utter a prayer for him. I'm not going to call a name or anything. But when I was pulling up here, Deborah told me that he had lost his granddaughter. Granddaughter, 17 years old. And uh, I called him because I teach y'all all the time that when I'm hurting, don't run from me. Run to me. Run to me. And I called him and I said that Deborah just told me that you had lost your granddaughter and everything. He said, yeah. He said, he said this one right here got me on my knees. He said, I ain't had a dry eye since third. I said, is that when she passed, sir? He said, yeah. And everything. And so I said, well, and he said, okay, can I call you back? I said, you don't call me back. I just called to you. I love you. You don't get to call me back. You got to call me back. Uh, we're living in times that if you ever pray for people, there's a time. I, I, I often remind y'all of when the Bible, Jeremiah said, call for the morning women. Let them weep between the porch and the altar. He said, go and hold on to the horns of the altar. Hold on and, and don't let go. I'm so glad that I'm in a place now I've taken my eyes off of people. You see, my purpose, I, I used to think that my purpose in pastoring was to help y'all. Purpose in pastoring was to help me. It's to help me. And that's, guess, that's the reason people get so caught up with how many people in the church, uh, how many vans they got, how many building projects they got going on, how many ministries in the church. That, that's, that's not the purpose. You can have all of that, and then y'all ain't doing nothing. Uh, God, God wants to work with us. God wants to change my mind. And my thinking changing ain't got nothing to do with you. I need to stay out of your business. You think, think the way you want to think. I want to talk tonight from Galatians 5 and 25. I want to talk about a choice and a gift. A choice and a gift. Some things that God just give you. The Bible says you are saved by grace, Ephesians 2 and 8. You're saved by grace. You ain't got nothing to do with salvation. And God choose you. You don't choose him. We started that mess about an altar call and, 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 um, and bringing an uh, invitation to Christ and everywhere. No, 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 no. The Holy Spirit, if you are saved, it wasn't no preacher that persuaded you to get saved. That's a lie from the pit of hell. If you are saved, the Holy Spirit began to worry you. The way you was thinking, it didn't seem right no more. The things Fred, that you were getting joy out of, God took the sugar out of it. That's what grace will do. Grace will change your appetite. Where the things that you just love, the people that you love to be around, you go around them and sound like they sound so foolish, it's a crying shame. You say, this ain't nothing but a lot of foolishness. Well, that's the goodness of God. That ain't none of you. You just, the Bible says in Romans 7, 18 says, Paul said, I know in me that is in my flesh. In other words, in my thinking. You know what? You take my brain and put it in a net, and the net going to be worse off. But that's not what we think. Oh, my God. We think that when we got here, we, we invented everything. We're the first somebody ever thought about doing this. And, and, and you know, what? it's the way you do it, not what you do it. I'm going to do it. God has to allow us to get embarrassed and, and, and to fall enough in order to... Uh, to change our mind. It's the goodness of God that leadeth thee to repentance. Repentance from what? Repentance from leaning to my own understanding. If you are saved, I can tell you exactly what happened. You got to a place where you told God, not listening to no pastor or nothing like that. You had been heard the word. You, you had to hear the gospel. You can't, how can they say it's except they hear a preacher? How can preachers say you, you heard the gospel? But it did not penetrate until you got to the place. God had broken up the fallow ground. And you got to the place where you told God, Lord, help me. Because I can't help myself. 
I can't go another further, Lord. I, everything that I'm doing, I can't. It ain't nothing working out like I thought it was going. You ever had your ducks all in a row and you thought everything was this and all of that? And, uh, and you rock a, a, a hurricane come through and tore all that down. Folks that you thought that you could depend on, folks that you thought that love you, folks that you thought that they would never know, no, they wouldn't say. And Lord have mercy, what you heard they said about you and your family. He said, Lord, why? But it was God breaking up the fallow ground. It was the goodness of God. It was just like Joseph said, you meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. If they hadn't have turned against you, if the door hadn't have been closed, you'd have been still out here thinking that you knew something and you was running, running your way. You was after the flesh. <sighs> but you said, God, help me. Help, help me, God. Oh, my God. And God came in. Yeah, and, and, and God changed your thinking that you don't think the way you used to think. That fleshly thinking. You don't think that you, 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 you that they get tired of you, Lady Deborah, because the first thing you want to say, I, I need to see what the Lord said about it. Oh, you turn people off then. Oh, you turn them off. I'm talking about, I ain't talking about outside the church, I'm talking about in the church. Yeah. Talking about outside, look, well, we need to see what the Lord said about it. Uh -huh. It's the flesh. And the spirit. I want to talk tonight about a gift and a choice. Salvation is a gift. Amen. Salvation is a gift. Look what he says. I, we're going to go back to that. But go look over at Romans 8. Romans 8. Salvation comes through the spirit of God. The, the spirit. Romans 8 and 1. Says. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, that does not mean that the way you not condemned is because you walk after the flesh. No, what it means is, is that the spirit of God is your life. He gave you eternal life. He gave that to you. You didn't earn eternal life. You didn't keep his commandments and keep his laws. And now you come to church every time the doors open, you paid your tithe. You honored the pastor. You honored the mother. No, 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 no. That's he gave it to you because God will never be a debtor to any man. God don't owe nobody nothing. He had to, he had to sit Job straight about that because Job really felt like that God owed him something. He began to talk about what he had done. God let him listen, let him talk. And he said, okay, now you've talked. Let me talk for a while. Since you know so much, where were you? When I told the water, don't go no further than right. There. Where was you? When I laid the foundation of the earth and set the sun, the moon, and the stars up there without no kind of ropes, no kind of props. They've been there throughout. Where was you? Job had to tell him, he told him, he said, look, I have other things. To, see, that's what God, goodness will bring you to repentance. Man by nature is haughty. Man by nature is, I've seen people, Sister Nella Trice, the sweetest folks in the world till they got two nickels. I, I've seen them. And say, you know what? You know, and I'm glad that God fixed me up before I got to be a pastor. Ain't now Negro and Manasseh never worried me. Because I know how y'all do. You mess around and you just, you know, you're checking on folks because you know we did, well, he ain't even called. I've been gone too much. You check on me, he said, well, I, 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 I'm where I was. I'm grown. So he, he, the difference, you see, God have to break us down to become his little children. And we said, Lord, Whatever you say about it. You have your way in my little... We, that's how the saints used to talk. Have your way in my little soul. That's how we used to talk about ourselves. Have your way, God. What I know, you taught me. Where I am, you brought me. Then they go so far, Mother Nun, and say, say, if it hadn't been for the Lord. That was their testimony. I know now, now they're talking about how many degrees they got. The house that they live in and, and how, what they, I done done this and that and the accolades and the plaques and, and all the stuff that I got. But what they, what they used to say, if it had not been for the Lord, 
you, oh, you couldn't stop them. They get happy on their own testimony. They begin to talk about how that they couldn't read their name in, in big boxcar letters and God made a way and sent them back to school and gave them a trade where they could take care of their children and some of them. And some of them had children and the, and the, and the dad had walked off and left them. And they cried hot tears and they said, God, he said, you know, I want to stand up for you. I want to stand up for you. And the thing about it is, is that when things like that happen, people are so cruel. They begin to talk about you like it's your fault. But all I can tell you, old soldier, is hold on. Don't you let go. Uh, because I'm telling you, you serving a God that never lost a battle. And he went down on record in the word. I'm preaching right now. He went down on, well, on, on, on the uh, book. And, and he said, look at here. He said, you shall have no need to fight in this battle. You ever had one like that? You had one where your hands was tied and God told you. God told you, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Lula, I didn't bring you this far in order to leave you. It's new to you. You just not seeing it. But I knew from the foundation that this was coming up and I already made a way for you. Out of nowhere. I'm giving you your testimony. The goodness of God leads you to repentance. The worst thing in the world that a human being can do is think that they can make it. The best thing that you can do is, is to understand, God, I can't make it. I can't make it. I don't care. And that's what Paul says in Philippians, the third chapter. He says, we are not of those that have confidence in the flesh. Now, if any of y'all think that you can. He said, look at my pedigree. He said, I was circumcised the eighth day of the tribe of Benjamin. Many of y'all, since we were brought over into captivity, you lost your heritage. You don't even know what tribe you came from. But my line was so pure that you can take me back all the way to Benjamin. Uh, he said, I was a Pharisee of the Pharisee concerning the law, zealous and without fault. He said, but everything that I thought I knew Every uh, uh, accolade that they gave me, everything. See, some of y'all that you can't obey God because man and gave you an opposition. You can't give me nothing. Don't think that they haven't offered it to me since I've been here. I could do this for you, and I can do that for you. No, baby, I don't had a repent. I don't had a change of mind. I'm, I'm, I'm not going. I'm not, I'm not going. Let me say, sometimes you can sit close enough to something that you finally see it. Uh, 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 much as I love the grizzlies and everything, I ain't gave them now damn this year. Because I was blessed to sit down there on the floor, right there by the players. I got close enough fat that I could see it smoking mirrors. It ain't what I thought it was. When I was sitting way up there, see, when you fall off and everything, you think it's something that it really ain't. Let me take it a little closer to home. I got close enough to you church folk that I don't feel the same way about you that I used to feel you and everything. No, 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 no. My God, I thank him for it. I thank him for it. I, I, make, no, I make no apologies for, for, for my God. I, what I've seen, I've seen. What I know, I know. And you ain't gonna make me, make me like, oh, you didn't see that. that, that ain't, yes, it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. You got a path to take. I got one to take. See, right here, this is a gift over here. But this right over here is a choice. The life that God gave you was given to you. But to walk in the spirit is your choice. You can lead to your own understanding. You can think that you still know something. You can say, go back to you. That's the reason that Paul told the Galatians. He said, oh, you foolish Galatians. You start in the spirit. Now you want to put the spirit to the side. And you want to be made perfect in the flesh. But what they do is they offer you and they, 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 they flatter you. And, and, and they offer you something that you see. But you see, you're supposed to be crucified with Christ. And Paul says, if I glory in anything, I'm going to glory in the cross. Baby, all them things that you, we're supposed to be through. We're supposed to be through with the world. We're supposed to be, okay, you don't believe me. Give me Galatians, uh, five, give me Galatians 6. I believe Galatians 6. Galatians 5 and 25 is my scripture. If I don't get to it, you, you, you can read it. Galatians 6. Here, yeah, because he is 
I, I didn't really understand. God bless you, Cheryl. I didn't really understand. What's the big deal, Paul? Uh, and that's when I'm glad that I don't just uh, look in the Bible now to, to get some, uh, uh, a subject so it has something to tickle your ears with. I'm trying to get an understanding. There ain't nothing like a person to get an understanding. You can't do nothing with them. No, 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 baby. Uh-uh. You, you can have a person in your life, and all of us have had it, that's making a big fool out of you. Everybody knows they're making a fool out of you, but you. You can't, but, 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 but when you get an understanding. You understand, like the blues singer said, baby, say, your, your key don't fit my lock no more. You, you can go on with that because I got an understanding now. And so it hurt Paul. They had received the gift of the Spirit. Everybody say you got the Spirit. Everybody say you got the Spirit. I got Bible on. The Bible says that if you have not the Spirit of Christ, you are none of his. So, 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 so you have the Spirit. But you have to make a choice. Are you going to lean to your understanding? Or are you going to, by faith, yield yourself? By faith, you were, buried, you were, you were uh, uh, crucified with him. You were buried with him. And you were resurrected with him as a new creation. I'm not supposed to be like everybody else. I'm a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. This old popular Christianity, that's it, this, this, it's a religion. It's a, well, we don't believe in gays. We don't believe in abortion. We don't believe that. that that's, a, that's a religion y'all done come up with. Y'all done come up with. Well, and then, you know, I got to live right. I got to act right. What would Jesus do? I got news for you. He already did it. Come on, what would Jesus do? He already did it. He went to the cross and he condemned sin in the flesh because I could not help myself. And so he went and as a ransom, he paid for my sins. So he says, uh, Paul says in verse 11, 6 and 11, you see how large a letter I have written unto you with my own hand. Verse 12, as many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh. How does Satan Ain't nothing better than the Holy Ghost. Ain't nothing better than the Spirit of God. How does Satan persuade you to walk away from the gift and return to the flesh? I'll show you. Here he says in verse 12, as many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh. You like to show out. You want to be seen. You want attention. You want them to call your name. You want them to recognize you. Uh huh. I told somebody a long time ago, somebody came over here and I said, they, uh uh, they're not gonna stay. I said, the stage ain't big enough for them. I ain't got no place for you. I'm not finna feed your flesh. I'm not finna get up here and announce how much money you gave. I'm not finna sit up here and talk about how great you are and everything. No. Paul said, I chose. Not to know anything among you, but Christ and him crucified. You, you, you see, you can't, like Rev. Mike said, you can't use, lose with the stuff that we use. We are supposed to, be, to walk in the spirit. And the spirit has certain fruit, Lady Deborah. Love, joy, peace. Long suffering. Things that's going to protect you from me. From me. I had some folks that just drove up on me yesterday and just went to talking crazy to me. I said, why would you do that? I'm sitting in there. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that everybody loves me. Here I am. I'm, I'm riding in this luxury car. I'm clean. She has down to my feet. You know, and I'm, the sun is shining. You were beautiful yesterday. I'm listening to my music. I'm jamming. They pull up to the side. And I said, well, do you want to get here? Do you, do you? I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm thinking if I'm nice to you, you know you're going to be nice to me. And then, and then I think, I thought they hit my car. Boom. I thought they hit my car. But the more I think about it, I believe they took that water bottle and just threw it down on, on the ground down there. It sounded like, because I got, and it sped off. Yeah. But that could, they could have lost their life behind it. 
it had been the right person riding in that kind of car with that kind of gun, chased them down. Chased them down and just had a shootout about nothing. Never crossed my mind. The Bible says, walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill. I'm not a killer, but don't push me. Chef, I got this thing in me that go all the way back when I was a little kid. When uh, I went up to Hopkins store and, and the big boy took my money from me. And I said, that won't happen no more. I didn't like how that felt. I didn't like how it felt that you could, and I was a free hearted kid, I probably would have gave it to him. I felt better giving it to you. Then you just come and you just take it. And if I'm not careful, I'm walking in the flesh, I'm going to make you pay for what they did back then. You call it overreacting. If I walk in the spirit, this is a choice. This is a choice. This right here is a gift. You have the life of God inside of you. But in order for you to be successful, that's when you got so many uh, 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 defeated people in the church. You wonder why it is that so many people are defeated in the church. The pastor getting a divorce. This is that going on, that going on. They're not walking in the spirit. If I walk in the flesh, my mind will give me a good reason why I don't need to be fooling with you. Now, I done stood up before man, God, and everybody and told that lie about how that uh, uh, for everything, no matter what happened, the better for, ain't nobody made you tell that lie. But you found a reason. You found a reason, but you, know, but you lied. You looked at them and said what they did. And then, I'm going to tell you something. You can lead them, and you can go to somebody else. And I promise you, they're going to give you a reason, too. I don't know nobody that ain't going to give you a reason to leave them. It's a choice. It's a gift and a choice. Look what Paul says here in verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord. You see, the cross is what destroyed me. But we don't want to be destroyed. We want to, like I said, we want to make a fair show in the flesh. That's what happened to Adam. Adam was being led by the Spirit. He told him, he said, that in the day that you eat of this tree of this knowledge, you're going to know something that's going to make you, make you think that you're going to start justifying and rationalizing and whatever. <laughs> he said, the day you eat it, you're going to die. How did he die, mother? He died spiritually. Now the connection that he had with God, he don't have that connection with God. But you see, I got to believe that God know better than I do. There's no doubt he does. But who believe it? Who believe it? And so once that I'm convinced, it's like a lot to believe it. I, I wasn't even taught this. I wasn't even told this. All I was told was what you do. I wasn't really told nothing about what God, that, 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 I wasn't told that vandal, you're not capable of making good decisions. Your decisions are going to be based on self. Watch when people get distressed. It ain't got nothing to do with what's going on with other folk. They distressed because of something going on in their life. We are selfish and self-centered. And the only thing that will take us out of ourselves is God. Then we will love. And, and what love means is, is that, okay, think about your little grandchildren or, or whoever. Love don't have nothing to do with how a person acts. It don't have nothing. My, 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 my children done brought me down to my knees. I, I'll fight a bad about it. Amen. And I'm not lying. Amen. I'm not lying. Ain't no, ain't no, I don't, no reservation. You see what I'm saying? That ring I told my son, I said, a woman that leave you, that ain't yours. 
if you can, I had a brother the other day, he don't go to church here no more, but he told me, he said, Pastor, you, you helped me through a, a lot of hard times when I was coming. He said, one thing I remember that you said, and that was, uh, if a person can live without you, you need to learn how to live without them. That ain't yours. If you decide that you can walk off and you can leave, because you can live without anybody, you just think you can. You love them, but they don't love you. And I had many folk like that in my life. I love them, but I come to understand you don't love me like that. He says, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. You have nothing to offer me. Keep your positions. Keep your titles. Keep your, you know. Really? I done done more than all these folks have. Man, yeah. You ain't never heard them say nothing about it. And I don't want them to say nothing about it. You know what? God gave me a definition of the day bound to join your peace. He said, peace is when you find within yourself what you wanted so badly from others. Whew. All of us want to be accepted. All of us want to feel like that we worth something. All of us want to feel like we appreciate it. But when you can find that within yourself. Uh, and then he told me this right here, mother. He said, look at the scripture. What Jesus had gone to him through time. But when he got in his father's will. When he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Walk in me. When he got, he said, what did he tell him when he came back? He said, sleep on. Y'all can sleep on. I got about four folks here that you, you done told them to sleep on. I done waited all my life for you to accept me, to see something in me. I done gone out. I done accomplished this. I done done this and everything, and I'm still, I ain't nobody. But that's all right. Sleep on. Because I belong to God. I had to take the path. You had to. What Joseph, Joseph said to his, to, to his uh, uh, brothers, he said, you meant it for evil. Paul said that if the princes of this world had known, mother, when they were taking my Lord and your Savior and putting him up on that cross, they thought that they were ending the hope of everybody. When he said, go on, lift, lift me up. Go on, nail my hand. Nail, glory to God. He said, if I be lifted up from the, I'll draw all men unto myself. I'm so glad, Fred, that God don't need my help. Because I'm sometimes, sometimes I feel like it and sometimes I don't. I don't. God in heaven, no, I, I love the ground that lay the devil walk on. But sometimes I just look upside of here and say, Jesus. I'm just telling you the truth. My flesh, my flesh is, is something. I just, just and I get angry like the other day when she was telling me about to wear that suit. And things have been going so good that day. I, I, I tried to make the spirit come in. And the devil just kept fighting with my mind. He did. And you know what? Everybody, all of me in there, everybody had on black. I'd have looked real foolish wearing what I had in my mind to wear. <sighs> well, let me get to that scripture and then we'll probably. Galatians 5. This is what I call myself talking about all night. Galatians 5 and 25. He said, if we live in the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit. Now, he has established already that the Spirit is what begot you. You have the Spirit of God. If any man have not the Spirit, he's not his. In Colossians, he says that, that Christ is our life. He didn't ask us, Sister Teresa, to give. give. They messed, they, what you said, uh, Nisa, they lied to us. They lied to us. Give, give your life to God. And I was trying, Fred. I was trying. Then they would make me feel guilty. All God done done for you, look how you act. When God already condemned, he wouldn't have gone to the cross. He had found one righteous man. He wouldn't have gone to the cross. He, he went to the cross as, as in my place. 
He went to the cross in my place. They say, ain't nothing good in them. They got to, this got to die. This got to die. Like that car, I kept asking the author to fix it. They said, Pastor, get another car. I just started trying to fix up. That's what I was doing in church till I got to Manasseh. I started trying to fix myself up. But it never did work. And it never will work. It never will work. Because the law, I can't keep the law because of my flesh. And then I begin to rationalize and justify. And my sin ain't bad. It's your sin. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. They talk about the four poor married folks and everything. He messing around with that woman. He messing around with that. that, that he brought adultery and everything. But, but you sleeping with everything in town. But I ain't married. rationalize and justify my wrongs but the law was given simply that we all might become guilty before God that I would repent I would change my mind and say God I can't do it he says if we live in the spirit let us also you got the spirit God gave you something you won't even use it you won't even use it you want to return to the flesh. And then you got people around that's talking to you. Think about how many preachers you got. That, I ain't scared to talk about here you, in Arkansas. Or even farther. That's going to give you this message tonight. He's going to tell you what you need to do. Going to further entrench you in yourself. Further entrench you in the flesh. When God took your flesh to the cross and he crucified to the world and everything this this world is something else y'all this world is something that some most people never break loose from it and it's all a mirage I, I, I think about one guy Muhammad Ali Muhammad Ali came along during my generation uh, to a great extent and, and he I admired him and uh, the, his, his accomplishments and how the, I liked how he talked. He, he would talk back to him. You know, he was a black man that would hold his head up and would talk one shuffling and all that stuff. That, but you know what he said before he died? He said, if I knew then, what I know now. He said, I wouldn't mess with none of them. He said, all of the accolades and all of the time, it didn't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing, y'all. And that's where Paul says in the end of Galatians, he said, he said, from this point forward, let no man bother me. They wonder why you don't love it like they love it. They turn the church into a circus. They got the flashing lights. It's worse than the casino. They got all this flash and all this stuff here that's going on there. But that ain't none of God. Isaiah, Teresa said about Jesus. He says, when you see him, you would not even desire him. When they put the tabernacle out in the wilderness, which was a symbol of Christ, they covered it with badger skin. Old, plain, drab on the outside. Mm, I got happy right then. On the outside, it didn't look like nothing. But when you walked inside. That's the reading that psalm. It said, oh, taste and see. Look, let me tell you this. They're going to try to persuade you that this is boring. They're going to try to persuade you that you're missing out on something. But let me tell you something. That's reading the Bible said that man ought to always pray and not faint. You got to stay in communion with God. When a man don't want a woman to prosper or thrive, he keep her away from the people who give a good sense. He won't even let her go see her pe people. He keep her out there to himself because he, he don't want her ever to see the truth. And so it is with, 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 with Satan. Satan always wants to try to make you feel like that you're missing out. But if you pray and not faint, 
If you stay in, they said, be careful for nothing, but in all things with prayer and stuff, make your request made known unto God. Whatever it is that's going, and every one of us is going through something. Every one of us got loved ones that, that, that's sick. And we don't know from moment to moment. We don't know the news we're going to get when we leave here. Nisa, Paul says, he once was foolish. I don't care about how many people in Bible study. Do you think that Harvard is worried about how many people in their classes? As a matter of fact, they brag about how few. Okay, let me give you some scripture on it. Jesus says, narrow is the way. Lady Deborah, I'm happy. I really am. I'm happy. I'm happy I'm on the right road. I understand that I had nothing to do with God saving me. I understand that God chose me. God gave me faith to believe. I ain't no better than the person that's not saved. It's his grace that God caused me to believe the death and, and God saved me and, and, and crucified me. Now, now I'm learning to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. You see, the other is a gift. But I got to learn how to walk this walk. And that's the reason that he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the edifying of the church, for the perfecting of the church to build us up. And where I'm going to be paid perfect at? In my understanding. When you're going to be a good mother, when you get an understanding. When you're going to be a good wife or a good husband, when you get a good understanding. Sheriff, I've lived long enough to see people that I knew whose wives died. And I went to the funeral. And I looked at them. And I looked at how foolish they looked. Because you see, after death, ain't no chance to get it right then. They gone. And you had everything that you needed right there at the house. But you're ripping and running here, there, grinning in everybody's face and everybody. And that's the only person that cared about you was the one that was at the house. I said often, I thank the Lord that the Lord allowed my mama and daddy to live long enough for me to get some sense. I used to come to town and wouldn't even stop to speak to my mama because I was on my way. To do what? That's what my mind would lead me. It's a gift. And you're going to go to heaven. But you sure going to go cramped up. You're going to go messed up. God wants each and every one of us. Ain't, ain't nobody in here no better than nobody else. God wants each and every one of us to be successful. But Sheriff, I really feel like that when I got saved, it was kind of like I got the greatest job that I ever had, but they didn't give me no training. Clap your hands for the Lord.